And tonight on our great, great American panel, she is an assistant professor of political science at Occidental College in Los Angeles. Carolyn Heldman is back. He is a former Indiana congressman, current president and CEO of the Club for Growth. Chris Chicola is with us, and he is a best-selling thrill writer and author of the brand-new book, Vanished. Yes, I got to read this. Joe Findar is back. And uh, guys, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. All right, Barney Frank talking down to his constituents. We've been watching this at all these town halls around the country. Argumentative, arrogant, and people are asking great questions. Uh, earlier tonight, let's roll this tape. We were promised would have changed that we can believe in. So far, if, if we are going and having all these changes and I haven't got a clue as to what they are. How can I believe in it? How can we trust the government that's shoving things through without letting us have a reasonable discussion about it? You ask me, how can you trust the government? Let me answer the way I answered before. Who ever told you to trust the government? You live in a democracy. Don't trust the government. Use your own individual initiatives. Don't excuse me, sir. May I respond? That's why we're here. Let me just now, here's the question. Government bankrupted Medicare. Medicaid, Social Security, and unemployment was supposed to go above 8% with the stimulus passed. That guy's right. Why should we trust them on health care? Well, I don't. I think that Barney Frank's response was really wonderful, right? He's saying don't trust government. It's a democracy. Get educated about it and go and have your say in the yeah, policy. But Barney Frank was part of the Democratic coalition that wanted to ram this bill down our throat without reading it in two weeks. Well, health care is a really complicated issue, and so far we're in the land of fiction, not the land of fact. We're in the land of fiction with health care, where there are death panels and euthanasia fiction. and abortion. I've read the None entire of that bill. is have you true. Read the entire bill? I have read the Wait entire minute, page bill. Page 425 as well as and 430, and Chris, I'll throw this to you. It was very, very clear that end of life counseling, I don't want a bureaucrat that, that is designated to save money talking to an elderly person and offering them end-of-life advice to you? No, I don't. And, Sean, I think this is the first time I've ever agreed with Barney Frank. He shouldn't trust the government. <laughs> yeah. But there's a reason that people don't trust the government. They can't think of a thing the government has ever run well. Um, they think of the post office. They think of um, anything. Even that Obama the, said that. Yeah, well, the, they want health care. The post office doesn't run well, sir? It's broke. They're broke, well, too. What I'm saying they're broke because of the advent of the Internet. What, I mean, the post I'm office saying, is a very efficient, wonderful organization. Well, I, I would, we could argue about that, but I would say what Obama's offering is a health care system with all the efficiency of the post office and all the compassion of the IRS. And people understand that, and they are scared. And because there is fear, there is now anger. And I think, and I think, that I, anger, I, I think you're right. And a lot of the anger now is, is due to the fact that they made a lot of promises about the stimulus, about the economy, none of which are coming true. 60% of Americans think the stimulus has failed to this point. You know, the thing about Barney Frank, I like him, I admire him. I disagree with him. He's wrong. And I live in Massachusetts, okay? Mitt Romney was our governor, and he pushed universal health coverage through. And Cover this is a different uh, idea, and it's a little complicated. No, but listen, it was terrible. You, you, it you, didn't people work, have right? to know this, that he said it will not cost you any more, okay? Right now in Massachusetts, it, the program is going broke. All right, people are not really aware of this. It's a real, it's a disaster. My, my sister-in-law has basically has to wait four months for an appointment with, with a with cardiologist. I mean, it's really, it, it, and it's costing us more, more wait time for less coverage. So that, if that's a model of what Barney Frank is pushing for, I'm worried about right, that. Right, now the Democrats are involved in all this infighting. They, they, you got the liberal wing, you got Anthony Weiner and others saying, hey, you know what, a uh, hundred of us are going to leave if we don't have the government option. That's what he's saying on the one side. On the other side, politically it's not viable because the American people, every credible poll shows they don't want what is being pushed. The question is, if they change the verbiage a little bit and they, go, they focus group it and they say, well, now this is going to be a co-op, if the government supplies the, the services, the pricing, and the supply, isn't that still government health care? You're talking about the cooperatives where people get together and they try to have more bargaining power in the market? That doesn't sound like a government program. No, no, to no me. but if the government controls the pricing, the rationing, what health care you get. That's a myth, Sean. Minute. There it, isn't rationing in health care policy. In fact, it'll bring down costs and we'll have greater wait choices. A minute, wait a minute. Medicare is rationed. Listen, right now, people are denied coverage with the government system. Well, Sean, you know, Harry Reid said that uh, you can call it whatever you want. It's going to be a public option. It's going to be uh, government-run 
uh, health care. But, you know, Rahm Emanuel is always very insightful. And, and he said the, the goal is not negotiable, but the path is. So I think this is a new path. Let's call it something different. Harry Reid said we can call it whatever we want. I think we should call it a Trojan horse. It's got set up by the government. It's financed by the government. All the products that will be offered are dictated by the government. It's government run health care. What if the Democrats go it alone as they, if New York Times is going to come out tomorrow, it's on the Drudge Report tonight. What will happen? If they do that? Yeah. Uh, it's not going to work. It's going to be a disaster. I don't think it's going to go for the Senate, in fact. I don't think it can work. So, so you but, think but, Ken Conrad's right, this is DOA? Because I, I think yeah. that Obama will literally, he, this is the holy grail for liberals. They want this in the worst way. Well, That's right, John. We think of health care as a basic human right. And, and it's unconscionable. Where in the Constitution does it say that? Where in the Constitution does where, it say that? Where in the Constitution does it say we have a right to privacy? Well, the, Where, it, it's been, uh, it has been interpreted in the Constitution, Sean. Interpreted it's a basic by liberal thing. activist judges, Caroline. Are you, I mean, are you saying that we shouldn't be watching out for? Are you I'm saying we saying shouldn't be providing care to poor people? I'm saying that the government screwed up Medicare and bankrupted Social no, Security does not deserve our confidence, and you have confidence in the government. Of, I have confidence in government as much as I do in a private sector, and you know, with health care raising, the, the health care insurance companies raising our premiums by 80 percent since 2002. You're making me mad. I'm going to throw the football at you. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, more of our great, great American panel next.